have a gift for you, the gift of shift. What is the gift of shift? It's the spontaneous realization that at any moment you can shift your attitude, your thoughts, and your feelings, and therefore your next step in life. If you accepted this gift, how would things change? By the way, we're always wanting to shift in the direction of up. Lately, fear has taken over. We were caught off guard and fear rushed in. That's how your bodies work. Your primitive brain has functions that are alive and well. And fear puts you in flight or fight, which as its first course of business, shuts off your critical thinking skills. To be clear, I'm not criticizing those skills or your intelligence, but rather, in this series, I will show you how your brain works in times of stress and how you can shift out of that and back into being calm and clear-minded. Remember that? With all the changes in society lately, you may be lonely, fearful, or stressed because there was too many changes too fast and it feels like there's nothing you can do about it. But there is. You can take back control of your attitude, your thoughts, and your feelings, and you can do so naturally. I'm Valerie, the hypnotic hiker, and as a hypnotist and hiker for the past 20 years, I've realized how much the two have in common for helping to shift to a fresh new perspective and gain creative insights. With my clients, I've seen firsthand the results of fear, elevated anxiety, and panic. In hypnosis, I take them in their minds on a hypnotic trip to a more focused and calm place so they can get centered and balanced to find calm confidence. Remember that? If I show you a way to shift to a new consciousness, to discover a better way to feel, discover a higher mission in life, a new calling, a new purpose, to feel more positive energy, to see the big picture, if I show you, would you do it? In your subconscious mind, you have the ability to do this. It's called the gift of shift, and you will discover it on the trails as I did. In these videos, we will take some hypnotic trips, virtual reality they call it, your unconscious mind doesn't understand the difference between real and imagined. So let's go. When I started hiking, it was for exercise. Now it's for my soul. Kind of like how the showers for the body or as a soak in the tub is for your soul. And it was time for me to shift my perspective as a hiker. So after hundreds of miles of Texas's 600 feet above sea level trails, it was time to elevate my path to shift up. So Brian and I did four mountains in 2019, and I realized that hypnosis is a lot like hiking, and hiking is a lot like hypnosis. In future shows, I'll demonstrate this to you. You may even learn some self-hypnosis. Here's how they're similar. You decide you're going to do it. You start out, and before long you realize a lot of time has passed. You feel relaxed in your body, and you're no longer thinking about all your worries and concerns. And then your mind is in a position to accept new thoughts and ideas. Did you know that when you're in nature, your creative mind is in problem-solving mode and you come off the trail with many solutions that are playing out unconsciously? If you have a problem, you say to yourself that you want to find the solution on the hike and then you just simply start off on the trail. The answer may come to you on the hike or you might realize it later or it just might seemingly resolve itself on its own. But the subconscious mind really did that. This year, we traveled to Wyoming, South Dakota, and Colorado. Just to clarify, we're not rock climbing, and we're not doing any extreme climbs, but rather some 7,000 to 14,000 foot elevations that are challenging mentally and physically. And they can also be challenging spiritually because the teachings from the Sermon on the Mount kept popping into my mind, and I knew it meant I needed to express those lessons in some way. So I'll share those insights in future shows. Here is a short slideshow from Black Elks Peak in Custer State Park, South Dakota. It was 3.3 miles to the peak, but it felt like five. The meadow was the first visual that stopped me, a real meadow. Bluebells, raspberries, bergamot, and black-eyed Susans. The expansiveness was like a load lifted off my shoulders. And then as we began to climb the elevation, we hiked through a field of glitter. It was magical. Traveling past the mica field, we were cooled off by the ponderosa pine. Then there were the moss-covered dump truck-sized boulders on both sides, which gave us a feeling of security and groundedness. And then we were just there at 7,400 feet at the peak, and all I could see were other mountains. 
I felt like falling to my knees at what we were taking in, and a little tear did roll down. It was a spiritual connection, and there was a sense that everything was good and great and that all was well. Mountains, land, waters, nature, all around. Peace on earth is what it felt like to me. I was in a trance. And just so you know, you don't have to go to a mountain to have this experience. You can go to your local park. Hiking and hypnosis are synonymous. How? The subconscious mind is open and suggestible on the trail, any trail. Anytime you're focused, when you're in nature, you're in trance. And being in the state provides new perspectives and insights and parallels. Just think how wonderful it will be to get outside, to improve your circulation, take in some nourishing sunshine, and step into a fresh perspective. More importantly, to find appreciation for the natural world, the rivers, the rocks, the trees, the shrubs, the flowers, the animals, the insects, the spiders, to find connectedness and peace. In this series, we'll do all of that in your mind. Remember, the brain doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. Don't you feel better after watching all those images of these majestic mountains? So come along with me as I walk and talk in nature. Come and go on a hypnotic trip. We're going to connect to the subconscious, which is the heart-mind. We're going to connect to the divine within, the source within that has the power to do all things. And wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Yes, it would. Come along with me. Before the next video, I hope you decide to get outside, even if it's a walk on your sidewalk or in your backyard or just standing on your balcony. Here's a way to turn that time into a meditative hypnotic experience. Have you ever tried to meditate? Did you find it's easy or difficult? Okay, let's all say together, sitting meditations are difficult. What I realized was that I could use my hiking time as my meditation time by focusing on all of the senses. To do this, you begin with noticing the visuals, the shapes, the colors, and do this for several minutes. Then move on to notice only what you're hearing and then move on to what you're feeling. This practice over time will make your hikes and outside time more productive and you'll benefit from them mentally, emotionally, and physically. Get ready for the next hypnotic trip by subscribing to this channel. Also, please like and share this video. This is the Hypnotic Hiker, and I hope you'll come along with me on my next journey to Browns Lake Trail in Colorado. I call that the Have Mercy on Me hike. Until next time, remember to breathe in some fresh air, relax, and enjoy the sunshine. Take good care. <music>